I know you're going to learn a lot watching this video. This is chapter three of Accounting 201, Adjusting Accounts for Financial Statements. I will review the highlighted learning objectives. First, we'll look at periodic reporting and the role of accrual accounting. So accrual accounting is where revenues are recorded when the products or services are delivered and expenses are reported when incurred versus the cash basis where revenues are recorded only when cash is received and expenses are recorded when the cash is paid. This shows an example of the accrual basis. If they paid $2,400 for 24 months worth of insurance under the accrual accounting method, $100 would be recorded in each month. So 2,400 divided by 24 months. So you spread it out over the time periods that are benefited. So the expense is matched with the periods benefited by the insurance coverage. Under the cash basis, if they pay $2,400 for 24 months of insurance, the entire $2,400 is recorded as an expense on the date it is paid. We will look at this framework for adjustments, which includes a three-step process. First, determine what the current balance equals. Second, determine what the current balance should equal and then record an adjusting entry. We'll look at deferral of expenses, prepaid insurance, which is the one I just was talking about. If they pay $2,400 for 24 months, that means that each month $100 will be recorded as an expense. So initially the full amount is recorded in the asset prepaid insurance. And then each month, $100 will be recorded in the expense account, and $100 will be reduced to the prepaid insurance account. So now the balance in prepaid insurance is $2,300 after $100 has been deducted for the current month's insurance expense. The balance sheet will show prepaid insurance as $2,300, and the income statement will show $100 as an expense. Here's the adjusting entry, debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance. Next, we're gonna look at supplies. So they initially purchased 9720 of supplies, so it's debited to the asset account. Then they took a physical inventory count at the end of the month, and it shows that only 8670 is remaining. This means the difference of 1050 has been used up. So we want to reduce the supplies account to the correct balance of 8670, and we want to increase the supplies expense account by the same amount which will be reported on the income statement. Now we will look at the journal entry, debit supplies expense and credit supplies. Depreciation is used for long-term assets. So we spread the cost of the asset over its expected useful life using straight line. The formula is the cost minus salvage divided by the useful life, how long we expect it to last. So here the cost was 26,000. We're gonna spread that out over five years, but we will subtract the salvage value of 8,000. So 26 minus eight is 18 and then 18 divided by 60 months, which is five years, means that each month we will record depreciation expense of $300. So we have an account depreciation expense, 
and accumulated depreciation. So instead of crediting the equipment account, like we did for supplies, we keep equipment at the original cost of 26,000 and we use a new account, a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. So the credit is to this contra asset account, accumulated depreciation, and the debit will be to the expense account. The journal entry, debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. On the balance sheet, this is after three months worth of insurance. So remember it was 300 a month, three times three is nine. So on the balance sheet, we show the full cost of the equipment minus the accumulated depreciation and the difference is called the book value. We'll look at deferred revenue. This is unearned revenue received in advance so we've received the cash in advance of providing the product or service. In this example, they on December 26th received cash of 3,000, which was for 60 days paid in advance. We credited the liability unearned consulting revenue. Now we want to record five days of service so this was for 60 days total. We're gonna take five days divided by 60 days times 3,000 to get 2,500. So we need to do an adjusting entry to show that we've earned 2,500 of the 3,000. So reduce the liability unearned revenue by 2,250 and increase our revenue account. So the liability will go on the balance sheet and the revenue will go on the income statement. And here's the adjusting entry. Debit the liability, unearned consulting revenue, credit the revenue, consulting revenue. We'll look at accrued expenses. These are costs incurred that are unpaid and unrecorded. So an example is accrued salaries. Here they have one employee, they pay $70 a day. They pay every two weeks on a Friday. The end of the month is a Wednesday. So we need to record for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, or three days times 70 per day. We need to show that we owe $210. So we debit the salaries expense and credit the liability salaries payable. Again, salaries payable is a liability. It goes on the balance sheet and salaries expense is an income statement item. Now in the next period when they actually pay the amount due for the salaries, so this would be on 1-9 of the following year, January 9th, we will pay for two weeks worth of salaries. So we're going to pay for 10 days total, credit cash, 10 times 7 is 700. The expense for the current period in January will be seven days and we need to reduce that liability that we just recorded for three days. So we have to split the debits into two, one to reduce the liability from the previous period and one to increase the expense for the current period. We'll look at accrued revenues now, which are revenues earned that are unrecorded and not yet received. So an example is we've earned some revenue, but we haven't received the payment yet. So the customer will pay $2,700 next year, January 10th. We've earned $1,800 of the $2,700, so 20 days of the 30 days. So we need to do an adjusting entry to increase accounts receivable and increase our revenue for $1,800.
This is what the general ledger accounts will look like. We have a accounts receivable and asset on the balance sheet and a total of $78.50 consulting revenue, which will go on the income statement. Then in the next period, when they actually receive the whole $2,700 that's owed, so on January 10th, we'll have this journal entry. We'll debit cash for the full amount. We will reduce the accounts receivable from the previous adjusting entry, and we will increase the revenue for the current period. Now we're going to look at an adjusted trial balance. So the unadjusted trial balance is what you learned about in Chapter 2. Now we're going to combine the adjustments that we just talked about with the beginning balances to get the ending balances in the adjusted trial balance. So for instance, supplies, we started with 720. We reduced it by the amount used, which is 1,050. So 9720 minus 1,050 gives us our ending balance of 8670. And then the other half of that journal entry was down here under supplies expense. And then that amount is also brought forward. So you want to make sure at the end that your total debits for each of these two columns and total credits are equal. We'll look at the financial statements, which will be prepared from the adjusted trial balance. You will first prepare the income statement. Revenues minus expenses gives you your net income. Then prepare your statement of retained earnings using the ending net income and subtract the dividends and then prepare the balance sheet, which will include the ending retained earnings balance along with common stock for your equity and your assets, liabilities, and equity. And remember, total assets equals total liabilities and equity. Now we will look at closing entries. So closing entries will reset revenues, expenses, and dividend accounts. These are called temporary accounts. They will reset them to a zero balance at the end of the period. So we can use these accounts to record the revenues, expenses, and dividends in the next period. We will use a new account called Income Summary. So the temporary accounts are ones that we close at the end of each period. Revenues, dividends, expenses, and income summary. The permanent accounts are the accounts that go on the balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and equity. We close only the temporary accounts. We will close them in this order. Close revenues, close expenses, close income summary, and then close dividends. So these are the accounts. We have two revenue accounts. They have credit balances, so we will debit those, as you can see here. The other half of this journal entry goes here as a credit to income summary. We have six expenses, all with debit balances. So each of these will be credited, and then the debit will go to income summary. Then we need to get the balance in income summary, the difference between the revenue and the expense, which is also your net income figure. $37.85 is on the credit side, so we have to debit income summary. The other half of that journal entry goes as a credit to retained earnings. And then finally, we close dividends, which has a debit balance. So we credit dividends to get a zero balance, and we debit retained earnings to reduce it. And then that also gives us our ending retained earnings balance. These are the journal entries that go with the previous slide. I suggest printing this slide as well from the full PowerPoint. The two debits 
to close your revenue accounts, add them together, and credit income summary. Here are our six expenses. Add these together, debit, income summary for the total. Now we want to get the balance of the income summary account. 81.50 minus 43.65 is 37.85. We need to debit income summary. We credit retained earnings. And again, this is your net income figure. And then debit retained earnings and credit dividends. Next, we can prepare a post-closing trial balance. These are the balances from your balance sheet. These are the permanent accounts and their balances. And then again, we're making sure the total debits equal the total credits. And finally, we will look at a classified balance sheet, which is where we separate current and non-current items for liabilities and assets. So current expected to come due within one year, non-current expected to come due later than one year. This concludes the recorded lecture for chapter three.